Hello, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. Today, on Museum at Home, we're looking at the paintings of Mary Collinge. Mary and her husband Tom spent three years in Port Alberni from 1911 to 1914, and the museum holds several of her paintings from around this time. Mary was born in Paisley, Scotland in 1882. In 1909, she came to Canada to marry Tom Collinge, who had emigrated from England the year before. The couple spent two years in Summerland in the Okanagan before moving to Port Alberni in 1911. We know a lot about Mary's life during her first five years in Canada as her letters home were published in the Paisley Daily Press and were later compiled into a booklet, Five Years in Western Canada, a Paisley Lady's Letters. The first part of the book is about Summerland and the second part is set in the Alberni Valley. Mary's first words written about Alberni show how some things never changed arrived here on Saturday afternoon, and it has been wet since. As there were so few houses in the new towns of Alberni and Port Alberni, Tom and Mary, like many newcomers, lived in a tent until more substantial accommodation was available. In January of 1912, Mary writes about deep snow and the tobogganing hill just up from their tent. Eventually, they moved into a small house on what is now North Crescent, overlooking Recreation Park. This is Mary's painting of the house she and Tom lived in. All of Mary's paintings in the museum collection are watercolour, and most of them are quite small. This is one of the larger paintings, and it's 25 centimetres by 35 centimetres. This next painting is of the village near Polly's Point. In her letters, Mary wrote, We had a lovely long walk on Sunday down the banks of the canal. Lock, we would call it at home. Mary, of course, was writing to family back in Scotland, and her words reflect both the era that she was writing in and the audience she was writing for. She continues, About two miles down there is a point called Polly's Point, and after we rounded that we came on an Indian fishing village. She then writes about the logs on the beach, seeing a dugout canoe being made, and finding violets and flowers like speckled orchids. Mary would often sell her work, as we can see in this note in the Port Alberni News from December 1913. She was displaying her work, including hand-painted Christmas cards, at her husband's realty office. This painting of Alberni with Mount Aerosmith in the background was used as a Christmas card by the Prescott family, and may have been one of the pieces in the advertised sale. Mary made her first trip to the West Coast in the summer of 1912, where she went camping with friends, Mrs. G and ten children, near Tofino. She did paint on this trip, as she writes, I have painted a picture of the sands and a pool, with a little boy sailing a model yacht, but Mary's paintings of the canal and the west coast that are in the museum's collection are probably from a later date. This painting of the Alberni Canal is thought to have been painted around 1915. Writing on the back of this painting says Molly Collinge. Molly is a diminutive form of Mary, which we'll see used again later on in this video. During the First World War, Mary and Tom moved to Bamfield as Tom was stationed at the Bamfield Cable Station. The canal painting is probably from Mary's time spent in Bamfield, as is this small painting, only 5 by 11 centimetres, of Barclay Sound. This view of the rocky beach near Bamfield is unsigned, but appears to be by Mary Collinge. It's likely that it also dates from Mary's time in Bamfield. The museum also has this sweet little watercolour entitled Sunset Glow off Hawkins Island, which may be a small island near Salt Spring. In 1920, Mary and Tom moved to Ladysmith, where they lived until their deaths in 1953. Mary also created the seal for the city of Port Alberni. Port Alberni was formally incorporated as a city in March of 1912. Its neighbour Alberni would incorporate in January 1913. The first order of business for the newly incorporated city was to create a city seal. Mary writes in 1912, I have just finished and had accepted a design for the city seal of Port Alberni. The mayor and council are highly pleased with it and saying all sorts of nice things about it. She then describes the design, which is enclosed in a circular band bearing the words City of Port Alberni, British Columbia, Incorporated A.D. 1912. And on either side of the shield appears a scroll bearing the inscription Perseverance and Prosperity, which is the motto of the new city. The shield itself is surmounted by a Spanish galleon, with the sun setting and the sea behind it, suggesting at once the discovery and naming of the place by the Spaniard Don Pedro Alberni and its position as a western seaport. 
The four quarters of the shield contain a miner's hammer and a pick, a tree, a couple of salmon, and an apple, symbolic of mining, lumbering, salmon fishing, and fruit growing, the four chief industries of the district. Which leads us to the painting of Incorporation Day. This wonderful painting shows the view up Argyle Street on March 12, 1912. Mary wrote home describing the watercolor. It is a street scene with flags and banners strung across to mark the incorporation of the city. It is a good subject, the background being Mount Aerosmith covered with snow, and the foreground the scarlet of flags and bright sunshine on red buildings and white, a splash of green grass and the yellow of the dry hilly road. I put some wee buddies in, and a motor car, and a horse or two. I hope it will sell. The painting was indeed sold, purchased by a Mr. Lowe, who put it on display in his office on First Avenue. A newspaper article at the time wrote that the piece is a work of art and should be preserved as a matter of historic interest. Today, that painting finds its home in our community museum, where it is preserved and continues to be a piece of historic interest. If you'd like to know more about Mary Collins and her early years in Canada, there are two books I can recommend. The first is Mary's published letters in the booklet Five Years in Western Canada, A Paisley Lady's Letters, 1909-1914. to 1914. Open Collections at UBC, the University of British Columbia, has scanned their copy of this book and has it available online. It's interesting to note that in their copy, R. Molly Collins is written under the photograph of Mary. The original owner of this book must have known Mary and was familiar enough to use the diminutive form of her name. The second book, A Lady of Paisley in the Alberni Valley, is the Alberni Valley Museum publication developed with the museum's exhibition of the same name. It reprints portions of Mary's letters and is illustrated with artifacts, historic photographs, and a number of Mary's paintings. This book is available for sale at the Alberni Valley Museum, or a copy can be found at the Vancouver Island Regional Library. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching the Alberni Valley Museum's Museum at Home.